Hi, I'm Barbara Naden. After three days in the Namib Desert, my husband Rex and I rode to Mata Mata, a traditional camp in the Galagadi Transfrontier Park near the Namibian border. Since there are no restaurants there, our guide, Dante's Liebenberg, will cook for us. We stop at this small grocery store along the way to pick up supplies. Dante's is camera shy, so even though he was a significant part of our adventure, we won't see him in the film. The few rest stops along the way are enterprising establishments. After meandering through several rooms filled with interesting memorabilia, we finally reach our destination. The route is a dirt road with large, wide-open savannas and beautiful blue skies with puffy clouds and termite hills like we had never seen before. Along the way, we stop to join some local people searching for wild African truffles. In Mata Mata, Dante's prepared the truffles for us. They have an earthy flavor similar to the Italian variety, but somewhat milder. The Galagati Transfrontier Park is an important conservation area in Africa. It spans the two countries of South Africa and Botswana, covering an area of about 15,000 square miles, with the Nassau Riverbed meandering through both countries. To survive the long dry spells, animals need large areas to move in to find suitable vegetation. Removing the fence between South Africa and Botswana gives the animals a greater chance of survival. During our five days in the Galagadi Transfrontier Park, we spent two at the Mata Mata camp near the Namibian border, two at the Nassab camp near the Botswana border, and the last day at Twi Rivieran near the south entrance to the park. The magic began when we got up that first morning. We were the first vehicle to enter the gates of the park. We were treated to this magical lighting in the early part of the sunrise. Even as fast as the area is, we soon began spotting animals. The gemsbok is a large African antelope. The males have perfectly straight horns like the one in front. The gemsbok in the back to the right is a female. Note the slight curve on the end of her horns. She uses them primarily to defend herself and her cubs from the lions, while the males use them primarily for defending their territories from other males. Gemsbok live in herds of about 10 to 40 animals and can reach speeds of up to about 37 miles an hour. Gemsbok are an endemic species to the Kalahari Desert. They can survive for days or even weeks without drinking water, simply relying on the plants to provide them with both food and water. They consume thick-leafed plants, wild melons, as well as roots and tubers they dig out of the ground. This male is being chased by another male and is running for his life. We drive down the road and see that the two Gemsbok have engaged in a battle. Their fight goes out of sight, but likely ended with the death of one. The blue wildebeest is native to the Kalahari. It is sometimes referred to as a gnu. Gnus belong to a family which include antelope, cattle, and goats. These large, awkward-looking animals can attain a weight of up to 600 pounds and can run up to 50 miles an hour. The wildebeests are famous for their long annual distance migration. They follow the availability of surface water and food sources. Although the wildebeest has a lifespan of about 40 years, the typical animal lives only 20 years in this environment. Here is a mama and a baby on their way to the watering hole. The wildebeest is one of the least well-adapted species to live in the Kalahari Desert. They require water every two or three days. During times of drought, they are one of the first species to show serious deterioration. Wildebeest enjoy a good role in the dirt and mud. Despite their awkward look, the wildebeest are quite agile. They enjoy play with each other and are often seen frisking around. The red hartebeest is a large animal with distinctive markings on the body. Note the black blotches on the legs and face and the heart-shaped horns. It is difficult to distinguish a male from a female hartebeest. 
The female is slightly smaller and has a slightly smaller head and horn size than the males. The harder beast is fast and can outrun a lion if pursued. They usually try to evade the predator by first running in a zigzag pattern. The harder beasts are well suited to the arid Kalahari climate. They can survive on the melons and tubers if the surface water is unavailable. Their main food source is grass. As the grass becomes depleted, they move to new areas to find fresh grass. The females give birth to a single calf, usually about the beginning of the rainy season. Note the baby in the center with the short straight horns. Giraffes have always been one of my favorite animals and it was no different in the Kalahari Desert. The coloring of their hides and their graceful walk is mesmerizing. In this scene, we see a father and the baby giraffe eating leaves of a camel thorn tree. A giraffe eats approximately 75 pounds of food a day and spends 16 to 20 hours a day feeding. These two giraffes are starting out early in the morning in their quest for food. They are the tallest animals on earth. The males can attain a height of 16 to 20 feet and weigh an average of 2,600 pounds. Even though giraffes are usually seen in groups, these groups are very loosely formed and change frequently. They have few social bonds. Here we see a baby giraffe with his legs spread apart so that he can reach the grass to eat. This is a very awkward and vulnerable position for a giraffe and they usually reserve it only for drinking water. That was a territorial male springbok joining his harem. He made the grunting noise as a way to greet them. The territorial male can be identified by the thick, large horns and his slightly larger size. This territorial male is marking his territory. Here's a group of female springbok. Here we have a playful sparring contest with two young male springbok. The springbok are known for their high, straight-legged jumping known as pronking. Although they can pronk as high as six feet, we see a mini pronk in this scene. Let's look at that again. Here is a baby springbok. If it is a female, she will stay with her mother for about a year. If it is a male, he will join the bachelor herd in about six months. The springbok are active primarily at dawn and dusk. During the heat of the day, they will often rest in the shade of the bushes or trees. Springbok can meet their water needs from the food they eat and survive without drinking water through the dry season or even over the years. There have been extreme cases where it has been reported that they did not drink any water over the course of their lives. This morning we left at sunrise for an early morning game ride from our chalet in the Saab. In this part of the Galagadi Park, the vehicles were high from the ground in order to see over the tall grasses. Here we catch a glimpse of a sociable weaver's nest at sunrise. This family of meerkats is sunning themselves early in the morning. Notice the one on the right on his hind legs acting as the sentry for the group looking out for potential predators. Rex and I both enjoyed watching the antics and play of the meerkats. Here we have an unusual scene. The meerkat on the right side of the log is the sentry watching out for his family's home. When in flies a tawny eagle, one of his predators. They stay in that position keeping an eye on each other for quite some time. This morning seemed exceptionally beautiful and peaceful in the Galagadi. The black-backed jackal is an opportunistic hunter. They will eat termites, wild melons, hunt for small animals, and feed on the carcasses left over from other predators' kills. Our early sightings of jackals had always been watching them run in a distance. Then we got lucky and found one nearby who was munching on something. We couldn't determine what, but probably some small rodent or mammal. The coloring of his coat is so beautiful. Don't you just want to pet him? The black-backed jackals are monogamous and very successful in raising their young. Unlike any other animals, the older siblings help take care of the young pups when they are born. 
Dante's had an eye for spotting the well-camouflaged animals. In this scene, we see a lioness in the upper middle of the grasses. Even though this shot is zoomed in by a factor of 10, she is difficult to see. We were lucky that she decided to get up and walk across the road. With the lioness now in their territory, these wildebeest and springbok are on alert, not sure if she's going to be hunting for them or not. The Kalahari lion behaves and looks different from other lions as a result of its adaptation to the Kalahari environment. Compared to other lions, it lives in small groups, covers larger home territories, and hunts smaller prey. One of its favorite dishes is the gemsbok, but when they are not available, the lions also eat antelope, porcupine, and other small animals. Here are a couple of young male lion brothers. Notice the black streak on their manes, and ah yes, what they do best during the day is sleep. On our game drive this morning, our guide noticed cheetah tracks on the road. We followed the tracks, and as we came across the bend in the road, we noticed the mother cheetah with her cubs. You can see four cubs in the foreground, and next to the bush on the left, you can get a glimpse of the mother. The cheetah is the fastest of the land animals. It can achieve speeds of 75 miles an hour in short bursts and sustained speeds of 60 miles an hour. Females raise their cubs on their own. The cubs stay with their mother for 18 months while she teaches them how to hunt wild prey. The ostrich is the fastest flightless bird, able to achieve speeds of about 40 miles an hour. This South African native eats primarily plants, but occasionally dines on invertebrates. They live in nomadic groups of 5 to 50 birds. The territorial males fight for a harem of 2 to 7 females. Each female lays between 2 and 12 eggs. All the eggs are laid in a central nest. The dominant female sits on the eggs during the day and the dominant male sits on the eggs at night. The ostrich chicks grow about one foot each month. We were lucky to find this ostrich family taking a walk one evening. There are two hens and a male in this family and approximately 20 chicks. Based on their size, I would guess these chicks are newly hatched. The secretary bird is an endemic species to Africa. It spends much of the day using its large legs to scare up prey from the ground. It eats lizards, snakes, mice, and other small animals. Local folklore attributes the name to the head of feathers that were thought to resemble a secretary with quill pins stuck behind his ear. At night, the birds roost in the acacia trees. While we were at a rest stop eating our lunch, we were lucky enough to see this Cape Cobra in an old camel thorn tree. This species of snake is of moderate size, reaching lengths between four and five feet, and is one of the most venomous in South Africa. It is found in many different habitats and is active during the day looking for prey. We were surprised by the diversity of birds that we saw in the Kalahari. Here is a red-necked falcon taking a bath. Notice the white snake in the center of the photo slightly to the right. It looks like a snake eagle has found its lunch. Or maybe not. This is a white-browed sparrow weaver building its nest. A cory bustard. One of the largest eagles, a tawny eagle. And one of the most colorful birds, the lilac breasted roller. One evening, we were treated to the spotted eagle owl. A nice close up view of the juvenile southern pale chanting goshawk. As our stay in the Kalahari was coming to an end, I was reflecting on the amazing animals and the environment in which they live. The conditions are so harsh that it is truly astonishing that anything can survive there, much less thrive. It was breathtaking to watch these animals in their natural environment. 
I felt a deep respect for these animals and their home. Someday I would like to come back and visit them again.